Victory is ours. <laughs> Jesus is the victor. Before we're Jesus, we are victorious. Satan has no rule over us. He has nothing, nothing over us as long as we stay with Jesus. Jesus has destroyed sin. But we are responsible. Not to dabble with sin. Um, Psalms 76. I'm just going to read a couple of verses here. And Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. And Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword in the battle. Selah. There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword, and the battle. Selah. There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword, and the battle. Our Redeemer's glorious cry of, it is finished, was the death knell of all the adversaries of his people. The breaking of the arrows of the bow, the shield and the sword and the battle. Behold the hero of Gotha, Golgotha, sorry. Using his cross as an anvil and his woes and his woes as a hammer, dashing to sh shivers bundle after bundle of our sins. Those poisoned arrows of the bow trampling on every indictment and destroying every accusation. What glorious blows the mighty breaker gives with a hammer far more ponderous than the fabled weapons of Thor. Uh, how the diabolical darts fly to fragments and the infernal uh, bucklers are broken like potter's vessels. Behold, he draws from its sheath of hellish workmanship the dread sword of satanic power. He stamps it across his knee, he snaps it across his knee as a man breaks the dry wood of a faggot and casts it into the fire. Beloved, no sin of a believer can now be an arrow mortally to wound him. No condemnation can now be <clears throat> a sword to kill him. For the punishment of our sin was borne by Christ. A full atonement was made for all our iniquities by our blessed uh, substitute and surety. Who now accuseth? accuseth who now condemneth? Christ hath died, yea, rather, have risen again. Jesus had emptied the quivers of hell, has quenched every fiery dart, and broken off the head of every arrow of wrath. The ground is strewn with the splinters and relics of the weapons of hell's warfare, which are only visible to us to remind us of our former danger and of our great deliverance. Sin hath no more dominion over us. Jesus has made an end of it and put it away forever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Talk ye of all the wondrous works of the Lord Ye who make mention of his name, keep not silent, neither by day, nor when the sun goeth to its rest. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 
Victory is ours. <laughs> Jesus is the victor. Before we're Jesus, we are victorious. Satan has no rule over us. He has nothing, nothing over us as long as we stay with Jesus. What do you say? Or what did the Bible say? There break ye the arrows of the bow, the shield and the sword and the battle. Jesus has destroyed sin. But we are responsible. Not to dabble with sin. Sin is powerful, mm -hmm. if we allow it to be powerful. Jesus already conquered it. It's, if we stay close to Jesus, Satan really, he's really not going to spend that much time with people if they are that close to Jesus. He may come around and, you know, do a little tempting here and there, but he's not going to hang out with people that are close to Jesus. Satan just as soon hang around people that are um, straddling the fence. Straddling the fence. He doesn't care about Maybe. those that he already has because mm -hmm. he's already got them. No. He knows the ones that are strong in the Lord. He ain't going to get them. He may tempt them, and they may slip, and they may stumble. But if they're truly close to God, Satan ain't going to get them. Folks that are, mm, they dabble with some sin, you know, they... Maybe they believe in God, and they even maybe they, maybe they even go to church, but they still dabble in sin. Those folks are what Mama just said, straddling the fence. Let's say they're like Christians one day, and not Christians the other day. And just took church. And, and Satan, he likes those people. Because he can persuade them. But that's a place we do not want to be. We want to be living for God. We want to be faithful to God. Because God has already won the battle. It's, it's up to us to follow in his footsteps. He's going to win the war. He's already won the war. It's done. You know how I know that? He skipped it again. It's all in here. He's got the answer key. It's right here. Jesus won. He's already won. All we need to do is follow the instructions. I have a question. Sure. It has to do with the motion. Okay. If people are Christians one day and not Christians the other day, and Christians this day and Christians mm -hmm. that day, and just keeps going around that, mm -hmm. like that. Will they get to heaven? You know, that's a good question, and that is between that person and God. We know what the Bible says, don't we? What's the Bible say we must do to be saved? Be filled with the, be baptized in Jesus' name and filled mm -hmm. with the Holy Ghost. It's really quite simple. There's yeah. other things that are quite simple. That well, yes, that is that is the, the one thing that we have to do. You know, we need to live. We need to live for God. We need to be true to God. We need to be um, devoted to God. Um, somebody can do, somebody can be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, 
and then live their life of sin. And go down there. That's between them and God. It, it is between them and God. Um, you know, we need to be faithful to God and love God and do what He tells us to do, do what He asks us to do. That's so that's you know that's important. Um, just because somebody says, "I believe in Jesus," and they live a, a horrible life, that doesn't mean they're going to heaven, does it? Mm -mm. So, but we just we need to concentrate and do what the Bible tells us to do. Not what you know other people tell us to do, but what the Bible says. That's an important thing to do what the Bible says. The Bible tells us that Jesus has already won the battle. And the war. And the war. Now we just need to follow in his footsteps. Do what his word tells us to. And we'll be seeing each other on the other side. <laughs> Hopefully a long time away. Okay. You look tired, Simeon Joseph. You're just being quiet. <laughs> you smiling. No. no. <laughs> Are you sleeping? I feel good. I feel good. I don't feel good. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Does this how need feel to be a Mommy day. feel, come here, sweetie. Mommy feel. Mm. It is warm. It is warm in here. Let's finish up study and we'll check it out. Let's finish up. Let's finish Devotion. Devotion. Father, we love and praise you this morning. Lord, we pray for Simeon Joseph this morning. He doesn't seem to be feeling up to par. Just pray, God, you put your hand upon him, Lord, and heal him quickly, Lord Jesus. And I pray that, uh, you know, again, we would you know, follow your word today, Father. God, uh, you, are the, you are the victor, Lord. I pray, God, that we would truly follow in your footsteps. God, we love and we praise you today. In your high name we pray. Amen. Amen.